Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. I'm a lecturer at the University of Vermont's Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources. And I'm here today on the Burlington waterfront at the Rubenstein Ecosystem Science Laboratory. We really are forming a research hub and partnership focused on the health of Lake Champlain. It's such an amazing resource that we need to protect, really the ecological crown jewel of our region. The lake here is really a primary economic driver for our state of Vermont in terms of tourism. It provides hundreds of thousands of people with fresh, clean drinking water, and it provides all of us with a wide range of really awesome recreational opportunities. But this amazingly beautiful lake also has some really significant water quality problems today and the primary culprit is nutrient pollution, primarily in the form of phosphorus. Phosphorus is a chemical element that's essential for all life. It's all around us. It's in our bodies, it's in the soils. Plants need phosphorus. But if you add too much phosphorus into a freshwater ecosystem like Lake Champlain, there can be an explosion of biological growth and algae growth. And that's what's been happening here in Lake Champlain for many years. That's a process called eutrophication. Too much phosphorus entering the lake results in these algae blooms, some of which are really harmful algae blooms, particularly occurring in some of the shallower, warmer bays of Lake Champlain, like Missisquoi Bay and St. Albans Bay, areas of the South Lake, and elsewhere where the algae blooms are in the form of cyanobacteria, otherwise known as blue-green algae. And cyanobacteria is toxic to humans, it's toxic to wildlife, it results in the decreased availability of oxygen in the water, which impacts the whole ecosystem. Certainly all of the animals and plants and aquatic life that rely on the lake for habitat. So it's a really, really significant problem, and it turns out that it's a very challenging environmental problem to address. And a big reason for that is because the vast majority of the phosphorus that's entering Lake Champlain comes from diffused surface runoff from a variety of different sources across the landscape. The primary source of phosphorus in terms of the percentage of phosphorus entering the lake is from agricultural practices in our state. Runoff from cultivated croplands, runoff uh, associated with all of the manure that's produced as a part of dairy operations and other livestock operations that ultimately has to go somewhere and when we spread it across the land it eventually enters the lake. But it's really too simplistic to say well Agriculture is the biggest percentage of the problem, therefore the solution is to target only farms with new regulations and get farmers to develop nutrient management plans. That's certainly part of the solution, but there are a host of other sources of phosphorus across the landscape. So phosphorus is coming off of the forest, forest lands in Vermont. Up to 21% of the phosphorus entering Lake Champlain is from forests. Phosphorus is entering the lake as a result of stream bank erosion. So particularly along streams and rivers in Vermont where we don't maintain adequate vegetated riparian buffers, the banks of the rivers lack stability, which results in increased erosion. And all of that sediment that's being eroded out of rivers and streams has phosphates bound up in it that eventually enter the lake. There's phosphorus entering from wastewater treatment plants from point sources where we're treating human waste, municipal waste. There is phosphorus entering the lake right here, like in, in, on developed land throughout Vermont, particularly in the Burlington area, where the human-built infrastructure creates so much impervious surfaces in the form of buildings and rooftops and roads. That results in a lot of stormwater, which contains phosphorus and ultimately enters the lake. So everyone, here at the Rubenstein Lab and the Echo Center and Lake Champlain Basin Program, everyone working on these issues wants a healthy lake and we all want a vibrant and sustaining 
agricultural system in Vermont, and there's just no simple fix to this problem. And so for many, many years, the state of Vermont, working in conjunction with the Environmental Protection Agency at the federal level and a host of other public and private groups, have been working towards a better comprehensive plan to address nutrient pollution in Lake Champlain. And that work has often been really contentious. There's been a lot of contentious debate about the proper course of action as between all of the various stakeholders around our lake. It involved lawsuits, so litigation has been in part driving efforts to clean up the lake under the Clean Water Act. And ultimately, the state, working with all of these groups, has come up with a new plan. And that plan under the Clean Water Act for cleaning up impaired waterways is something called a TMDL, a Total Maximum Daily Load which is, simply put, a pollution budget for phosphorus entering the lake. The TMDL dictates how much phosphorus can enter Lake Champlain on any given day and still allow the lake to meet water quality standards set by the state. And that TMDL is primarily being implemented by a state statute, which the state passed in 2015, and it's called Act 64, otherwise known as the Vermont Clean Water Act. And the state legislature here and the state agencies that implement the regulations under that act have adopted what they call an all-in approach, an effort to strategize and address all the sources of phosphorus entering the lake across the landscape. And so the new TMDL and Act 64 are certainly a step in the right direction towards addressing nutrient pollution but it's still an issue and there's still so much more work to be done. And so here at the Rubenstein Lab, in conjunction with the Echo Center and the Lake Champlain Basin Program, is a place where UVM students and faculty and staff are studying the lake health, they're monitoring the health of the lake, and they're working on new strategies to mitigate against nutrient pollution here in the Lake Champlain Basin.